So in this video, I'm gonna to react to the Subnautica Below Zero world record speed run. And why am I doing this? Because I recently posted a 100 day video on my other channel, Totally Not Good Beard, and I was curious, how fast can you actually beat this game? And by the way, I wanna give credit to Resky. He's the person who did the speed run. And if you like the content, head over to his channel, the link's in the description, and watch some of his videos. He's very talented, way better than me. 23 minutes, 29 seconds, good Lord. <laughs> just the world's fastest clicker right there so like okay the clock hasn't run yet so i'm assuming that it doesn't start until you can play the game now are we going to skip okay now it includes oh he skipped the intro no he restarted why did he restart okay skip the cutscene. Why is he restarting so much? I've never speedrun this game. I just want to do a disclaimer. I've played this game a bunch of times. And so my best guess is that the intro, once you're on the planet, I know that it's not scripted, which means that you're not getting the same stuff every time. You're not in the same starting point every time. And so I'm assuming that he's restarting because he needs very specific things to give him a good start. I'm assuming. But if you know, if you know, please tell me in the comments, because I would love to know why he's restarting so much, because who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so we skipped the intro. Okay, so I'm going to say I have no clue why. In this, in this moment, I have no clue why. <laughs> I love how, like, up here it says early shenanigans <laughs> to get things figured out. But, okay, I, I'm just assuming that it's, like, he needs specific things in a seat. I don't know, man. I'm just guessing at this point. That did not go as planned. Am I the only person that prefers no talking in the game? Is it just me? I just felt like, okay, I'm gonna get on a small tangent right now. In the original Subnautica, the fact that there was no talking just made it so much scarier. And so when they added talking, it kind of sucked you out of that, you know, you're alone, kind of deep, dark kind of fears, and it kind of pulls you back out so the game's not as scary. Okay, so here we go. Finally in the water. We're getting things that we need to finally get going. I am genuinely excited to see how he does this. And by the way, I just want to mention this is a glitched run. And even this guy, this same guy still holds the world record of the non-glitched run. And I think it's like, what, like 10 minutes slower, which is just absolutely bonkers. I love that they added that in this game. Putting resources in nooks and crannies like that just makes everything speed up way faster. Awesome. Subnautica Below Zero did such a great job of just quality of life changes. Like the big room, the sea trucks, which I love, by the way, um, putting resources in nooks and crannies like that. So he's in the drop pod, making exactly what he needs. The wiring kit, made some food, lots of stuff just makes the scanner immediately i'm just so curious how he's going to get to the bottom because right now he doesn't have a builder and so obviously he needs to go scan things to make the builder but i'm just so curious how he's going to do it because this is glitched and so i have no clue what he's going to do okay so right now we're looking for a glider right now this makes things way faster when you have things that are interactable highlighted like that so what how long did it take him it took him about three and a half minutes to get the sea glide unlocked. Now, I don't quite know if he has everything he needs to make it immediately. He has a wiring kit. I didn't see him make a battery. He was making things so fast. Yeah, he's doing it now. <laughs> he just knows exactly what he needs. This is so true with Subnautica. Like the first few days in game is just you having to gather all these super basic resources to raise your quality of life. I mean, with him, it's the first three and a half minutes of the run. <laughs> but for me, it would take about 10 in-game days to get out of the shallows until I feel comfortable getting out of the shallows. What? Did you see that? Hang on. He, he threw a snowball at the wall and he just glitched out of the out of the life pod oh now i'm watching so closely because like the glitches could happen at any time i went from like passively watching this to very intense on this still scanning stuff he just needed the titanium oxygen i hate that that's like everyone's ptsd that oxygen notification oh you're about to die buddy <laughs> he just dolphins real quick he's got this whole thing so optimized I haven't even thought about turning on that setting to highlight things, or is that a mod? 
I just never really bothered with the settings that much. Because everything you can interact with is highlighted, that makes everything so much faster. Because you're not stuck searching for rocks and stuff. You can just kind of swim around and look for purple. So I, okay, so I believe stuff like that is scripted. So those platforms, I believe, are scripted. So they're there every time. And I believe the items, the general items that are there are around them. I don't know if they're in the same spots every time, but at least he knows where to look for them. I don't know why he needs the Pathfinder tool, though. Straight into the monkey nests where all the real goodies are. If you ever wonder where you need to go find specific things, just always check the monkey nest first. Just like, if there is a monkey nest, just swim down there and check it. They have the best yes. things in the game. Okay. Wait, how is he able to shoot it in storage? Is that a glitch? He just shot all these things in storage. That's not how it's supposed to go. So that just saved him an entire trip. He ha he now has everything he needs just waiting for him in storage. And he's going to kill himself. And he's going to respawn. Okay, he put everything in storage. He killed himself. He's going to respawn in the life pod. And now everything he needs is already there at base. So he doesn't need to go back for his body. And now he's floating. Yeah, there it all is. But that's so weird. He has immediate storage access. He didn't lose any of his stuff either. Typically when you die, you drop like and he snowballed right out of the place again. <laughs> okay. Typically when you die, you drop like the immediate resources that you just picked up, right? Someone, someone correct me. If you die in this game, you don't lose your tools, obviously, but you just lose, I don't know, the past five minutes worth of resources you just gathered. Somebody tell me in the comments. By the way, hot take, bladderfish are like my favorite fish in this entire game. I mean, obviously cuttlefish and then those other one eyeball fish, I forget what they're called, but bladderfish, man. And this is such another quality of life thing that they added that I love. Just those little plants that give you oxygen just to keep you down there longer. Okay, just getting resources right now. That can't be normal, right? Because I don't remember being able to access storage like that, right? That's not normal. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head everything you can and can't do in this game. And I don't think you have direct access to your storage. Okay, smart. Scanning through the door. Saves a little bit of time. Now you're going to off yourself. So they off themselves just to quickly get back to the, the crafting station, which makes sense. That's something with my smooth brain could have figured out on my own. Wait, there was something sitting there on the crafting station. What did he grab? Was that just a battery sitting there? The standard oxygen can be upgraded and VIP Copper, batteries, more batteries. Gosh, it's just so efficient. Half the time when I'm trying to think about what I want to craft, I'm looking for it half the time. I know where it is. I'm just like, oh, well, where is it again? It's just so smooth how he's playing. He's making it look so easy. Okay, so he has the builder tool, he has a scanner, and he has a pathfinder. Whoa, 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 what did he just do? The FPS cap, he's gonna turn it all the way down. <laughs> what? <laughs> he just... <laughs> okay. So thank you, FPS Cap and the Pathfinding Tool. Who knew those two were such important things? Just tanks a hit. I'm just still so shook. I didn't even know that was a thing, just yeeting yourself like that. But I've never I've never looked into speedrunning this game before. Okay. Makes it a little bit faster picking yourself up. You're gonna off yourself. So, okay, he just yeeted himself over there. He yeeted himself over there to pick up very specific things and he's going back to his crafting station to once again make himself fly off. Oh, so smooth. He makes it look so easy. Okay, so to yeet yourself. No, 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 he, is he, is that an iceberg or is he crafting something? Hang on, go back. Okay, that, that is an iceberg. No, it's not. It's like he halfway crafted something in the water. You see what he's standing on right there? That's, I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting so hung up on that. I didn't even know you could do that. And there he goes.
Oh, I'm sorry. You can just dive down that fast? Did you see how fast he got down there using that tool? <laughs> Someone please explain these to me. Someone who speeds run this game, please explain to me how you're able to yeet yourself like that and using that tool to dive down so ridiculously fast. Someone explain that to me. Okay, so making a micro base. I love these, by the way. They're my, they're my favorite things to make. Okay, so why did he put the door against the wall like that? See, why is he trying to do that? Is he trying to glitch through the wall? Yes, he is. There he goes. <laughs> At least I figured that one out. Passing 200 meters. And there he goes. He's able to swim straight down without anything getting in his way. Gosh, that is so impressive. And he's able to get all these things he needs for late game items. <laughs> oh my gosh. I honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. This is the glitch run. I honestly thought there would be so many moments of just traveling that you just kind of look into empty water. And I, but I don't know what I was expecting, but not him yeeting himself, speed swimming, and gl glitching himself through the wall. I mean, what was I expecting? Yeah, he's just getting everything he needs. So he's going to go through the wall again. Oh, first try. Nice. So he's swimming around all of that stuff. Oh, he's going straight to the body parts. That makes a lot of sense. And since he's swimming, he drowns. The game doesn't know any better. So he's back at the crafting station. So right now he's gathering everything he needs to craft the body for Alan. Okay. And he's back through the wall again. I didn't expect that. I forgot that that happens. Oh my god, he's already at the bottom. So fast. And it's just so smooth as well. Oh. He offed himself. So now he's on the Arctic Spider section. He took a few screenshots. He's gonna go to his halfway... No, he's just gonna speed spin. I don't know why I keep saying speed spin. <laughs> New creature discovered. He just got so high. Everything is just happening so fast. Like, I'm just in shock how quickly he's making all this happen. Obviously, it's a speed run. I know, but I'm just so impressed by how easy he's making all this look. So, okay, so he partially crafts that. Gets a free titanium. Oh, that's why he can't finish it. He needs a bit more stuff. So he's going to go through the wall. He's just going straight to body parts right now. Alan's body parts. See, this is what I was expecting more of. Just not seeing any, not seeing anything. Just a bunch of this. But no, he's just doing much more than that. <laughs> it's just all so impressive to me. So he shows up under the base. Under an alien base. He's going to launch himself up goes through the floor and he has the last body part yeah that's the last body part and i think he already grabbed everything he needs as well yeah he's gonna off himself so i guess he's gonna go back to that small base he made to glitch through the wall so he already did the arctic spider that's already done now he's skipping alan yeah just making all the body part stuff it's a great story i promise subnautica below zero it's a great story he doesn't believe in stories he believes in traveling through people's walls. <laughs> Took him two tries that time. That poor bladder fish. <laughs> He's just going on a trip of a lifetime. You can just hear all the creatures in the background just growling at him. How dare you cheat? Oh. <laughs> Just imagine being just swimming, enjoying your day, and then all of a sudden this random speedrunner just takes you for a ride of your life. And there he goes. Eats a whole bunch of fish. There he goes. You see, I was I was imagining a whole bunch of this, just empty water in this speedrun. Holy cow, he's already through. He's already at the bottom. Why wouldn't he be? Why at this point, why wouldn't he do this? 
So he already has everything he needs. That poor fish is just swimming in the sky. So what is he looking for now? Oh, he's trying to get the kainite. Like things you can only find at the dead bottom. So how did your valuable See, this is what I mean. The talking just takes you clean out of the story. It just kills your immersion. That's what I mean. I don't know how to fix this. I enjoy the talking and the lore, but it just kind of takes you out of it. <laughs> I just imagine Alan's stuck in her head right now. Just Al She's just zipping around and Alan's all confused. Where are you going, lady? And this is the last one she's making right here. So she has everything she needs now. So she just climbed up a wall. Oh, she's going to hurt herself. Okay. <laughs> Why was she jumping off the wall? She was trying to hurt herself. And while she was hurting herself, she was doing like quality of life things, switching out batteries and stuff. The game's just trying to catch up with all this lore that she just skipped. It's definitely faster to off yourself and get back up to the base because she didn't build a base anywhere down there by the bottom. So she's going to go back up near the life pod, I believe, once she dies. But she has to wait for this cutscene. Isn't Allie just so good looking? So he's able to interact and now he can finally, she can finally do the last jump. There we go. That's just so funny. I know you're talking, but I'm just going to keep hurting myself while you're talking. <laughs> and so she spawned, she spawned in that mini base that she made directly below the life pod. And so she just respawned in the walls. So she's able just to get straight to work. Oh, she is under everything. She knows exactly where to go. <laughs> she didn't get it that time. That's just like that joke. I mean, I'm hearing your walls. Oh, don't die. And there she goes, right there at the end. Now it's just a lot of waiting for the cutscene. They're trying to make you so impressed with Alan, but right now she's just trying to get done. Now all of this is cutscene now, I believe. Well, other than like helping him build the ship, but everything else is just kind of straightforward. Okay, so we went through, cutscene's finally over. We just gotta fix those columns and then we're ready to go, right? Then it's just all cutscene at that point. Then we just wait for the credits. Can you imagine this guy doing, this is the world record speedrun, by the way. Go to speedrun.com, it's there. This guy's here in this moment, looking at the time and his heart is just racing. His palms are probably so sweaty. There it is, the beautiful ship. Well, that's not the ship, that's just the, the, the gate. I don't know the right words in this game. This is one of the coolest parts of the game right here. You're given those cool arms. I wish you could do more things in the game with those cool arms, but that's just a me thing. Because she just glides. Very good. You're very good at fixing columns. Maybe not. <laughs> this is just the last one. You know he's freaking out right now. He's in the middle of recording this by himself, just freaking out because he did it. Everything went his way. All these crazy odds, clipping through the wall, launching yourself in the right directions, getting the right start, all that stuff just went perfect, finally, for once. I would be freaking out. I love that. You just see his after selves. <laughs> that right there, him walking back and forth, that's like, that's just such nervous energy. It has to be, because he finally did it. Oh, that is so cool. Smooth, really smooth. I'm really impressed by this guy. Good job, man. If this happened to you in real life, something would be broken. Something, something, anything would be broken. He did it. That was so cool. That was genuinely so cool. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like, please be sure to like and subscribe. And let me know what else you guys want to see in the comments down below. And also be sure to check this guy out. He's the person who did all this. He did all the hard work and it was incredible to watch. So thank you for watching. And if you like this, go to his channel, watch a few of them, maybe subscribe to his stuff. Who knows? And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.